Dumb decks. Hey, what's up, nerds? Hard Leg Joe here, welcoming you once again to Dumb Decks, the show where I look at Yu Gi Oh decks that are fun and interesting, but not competitive in the slightest. This time, we're looking at Ice Barrier Stun, as brought to you by Patreon sponsor, The Black Rose, who wanted to see my take on the new Ice Barrier support, which turned out to be trickier than I thought. Because you see, the new support is pretty good. It allows Ice Barriers to put several monsters on board first turn, which means they can actually do some pretty strong combos. It's just that the best combos they can do are the same combos every deck can do right now. Anything playing tuners can make Halka Fibrax go into a Roradon combos. And any deck that can put two monsters on the board, period, can make Verte Anaconda to summon Red Eyes Dragoon. It's just something everyone can do, and Ice Barriers are no exception. Uh, that being said, using low-powered decks to do generic combos is not really my style. Like, I'm not playing Ice Barriers because I want to summon Dragoon. If, it, if I wanted to summon Dragoon, there are about two dozen other decks that could do that a lot better. So no, if I'm going to play an archetype, I'm going to lean to what makes that archetype unique and try to keep it fairly pure. Which does not work very well with Ice Barriers. If you're unfamiliar with the archetype, their playstyle is actually kind of cool from a thematic standpoint. Most of the main deck monsters are floodgates of some kind, designed to restrict what the opponent can do. Get a bunch of them on board, and you can create a wall of monsters that essentially freezes your opponent in place, like like some kind of, I don't know, ice barrier, perhaps. Then, when the time is right, you break through your floodgate wall by using your monsters to synchro summon, metaphorically shattering the ice barrier and releasing the ancient powerful dragons held within. It's, it's pretty neat. These boss monsters all have removal effects that let you clear your opponent's remaining cards and then attack for game. Which makes Ice Barriers a natural stun deck. They go first, hinder your opponent on their first turn, and then strike while their defenses are low. At, at least that's the theory. In practice, the floodgates we have access to are far too niche to ever be effective. A General Wayne, for example, is a one-sided macrocosmos. Uh, but only for spell traps, which makes him awesome against ritual decks and, and decent against Eldlich, and nearly useless against everything else. A Mirror Master, meanwhile, prevents your opponent from tribute summoning, so it shuts down Monarchs and Klees, but nothing else. A Defender stops monsters with 1600 or more attack from attacking which might have been good in an age before Excess Code Talker, but these days every single deck has a way to pop this before the battle phase even arrives. Perhaps the only good Floodgate in the entire archetype is Warlock, who's essentially an anti-spell fragrance on legs, making it so both players must set spells for a turn before they can activate them. Which, don't get me wrong, significantly slows down like a third of the decks in the game, but unfortunately, that's not good enough to build a whole deck around. Which is, which is why Warlock is in the side deck and not the main deck. Aside from maybe Defender, we don't play any of the Ice Barriers for their Floodgate effects. We play them for their ability to swarm and make Synchro monsters. They can do this fairly consistently now, but not through Disruption, which means you still want to go first and stun your opponents, just... Instead of stunning them with the Ice Barriers, we use a lineup of powerful traps along with a small frog engine to make Bahamut and Toad. This still feels a little cheap because, I mean, these aren't archetype cards either, but they're at least tangentially related. Like, you can only make Bahamut Shark with level 4 water monsters, and all the Ice Barriers are water monsters. A Toad itself can only be made with level 2 Aquas, and the Ice Barriers just happen to have one of those that can special summon itself if you control another Ice Barrier. As for my traps, uh, Pulse of Trishula is specifically Ice Barrier support. The Icebound God is implied Ice Barrier support. Fury of Kairu Shin is water support that searches Torrential Tribute. And Ice Dragon's Prison is, uh, it's entirely generic. 
but it does have a picture of an ice barrier monster on it, which, which is close enough for me. Uh, we also play Trap Trick to search all these traps, since you'll want to see at least one of them first turn. Generally, the idea is to go first, use a combination of totally awesome and these traps to slow down your opponent, and then follow it up with a whole bunch of synchro shenanigans. Either ending on your ice barrier synchros, or some related water support like White Aura Whale or Dragite. With all the new support, you can make these pretty consistently now, which... I guess I should go over the new support, shouldn't I? Your main playmaker is Mirror Master. She's a level 4 water that can discard a card to summon an Ice Barrier Tuner from the deck. This can get you Defender if you're trying to stall, or more likely, Frost Spirit. This little blue doggo lizard is naturally a level 1, but it can send a level 2 or 3 Ice Barrier from deck to graveyard to become that level instead, effectively letting you modulate to fit whatever you want to Synchro Summon. This means that Mirror Master alone gives you access to Gungnir and Brionic, and adding a free special summon like Miko or this Water Tenyi lets you access either of the Trishulas. And not only that, but since she's a level 4 water monster, she, along with Miko or the Tenyi, can allow you to make Bahamut and Toad, giving you some flexibility as to what you want to do with your hand. Uh, we've got two traps that require some setup. Pulse of Trishula needs you to control an Ice Barrier Synchro, while Icebound God requires you to control two water monsters. Mirror Master does both of these easily. If you just need a Synchro, you can do that with ease. And if you need two water monsters, then you can plop down Defender, and, and maybe its Floodgate will actually help. My point is, Mirror Master does everything, and you want to get her as quickly as possible. Fortunately, she is very searchable. Not only do the Ice Barriers just straight up have a spell that lets you search any monster in the archetype, but they also have this, Calm After the Ice Barrier Storm. This allows you to tribute any number of Ice Barriers to special summon the same number of level 4 lower Ice Barriers from your deck, which effectively lets you turn any Ice Barrier into Mirror Master. And if that weren't enough, we also have Wayne. This can search any Ice Barrier spell trap when it's summoned which gives you easy access to either of your search spells, as well as Clear Wall, which is just essentially monstery born for low-level ice barriers, as well as some bonus protection. The only unfortunate thing about Wayne is that he is level 5. And while he can special summon himself from the hand if your opponent has a monster and you have an ice barrier, that's not really helpful first turn. However, I still think he's worth playing at 3, not only because he's amazing on follow-up turns, but because even on your first turn, he can get all your plays started, assuming you open with a frog or the tenyi. You could special summon either of those, and then use them to tribute summon Wayne. Once summoned, he searches Calm, which can be used on him to summon Mirror Master from the deck. It's not the most optimal use of resources, but you gotta take what you can get when you're playing an archetype like this. But anyway, now that you kinda know how this works, let's see this thing in action and give you an example of how it plays when it works. In this instance, I actually open with my one-of copy of Attendant, who can tribute itself to summon a level 5 or higher Ice Barrier from the hand. I choose to do this to summon Wayne, rather than tribute the Tenyi, because Attendant actually has a better effect in the graveyard, and I want to get it there early. For now though, Wayne searches Calm, Calm summons Mirror Master, who then summons Frost Spirit and lets me make a Synchro. Which I need if I want to activate the Pulse of Trishula trap that I have in my hand. Normally one non-targeting banishment is not enough to stun for an entire turn, but it just happens to be the perfect counter for what my opponent has here. Banishing his Alistair leaves him unable to fusion summon, letting us pop off on the next turn. Calm actually has a graveyard effect, letting you add an Ice Barrier Engrave to your hand. I use this to get Prior, who can tribute himself to summon any Ice Barrier from the graveyard. This allows me to re-summon Wayne, who searches Clear Wall, which re-summons Mirror Master. If need be, I could Synchro Summon here, but since I have another Pulse of Trishula and Clear Wall, I pass with these four. Clear Wall makes my Ice Barriers immune to the effects of Extra Deck Monsters, as long as I control at least three of them which seemed like a solid bet against what I assumed was a fusion deck. He ends up setting three to try and stall for one more turn, but unfortunately for him, I have all the answers. 
Brio bounces the set monster, he tries to stop it with Imperm, but Pulse of Trishula can be banished from Grave to negate any effect that targets an Ice Barrier Synchro, which saves me from that. He then tries to block my last attack with Monstrosity, but my final Pulse just banishes that so I can get in for game. So yeah, it works fairly well uh, against decks from 2018. <laughs> Most modern archetypes these days will be able to play through a single banish, clear your board, and then put on some disruption of their own, which you cannot play through. If you get lucky drawing your traps and you're strategic in how you activate them, you might be able to pull out a win against modern decks with this, but it is very rare. Mostly this is something to play with your friends casually, a modern take on ice barriers that can be fun if you're going up against a deck that is equally janky. Uh, regardless though, I hope you enjoyed hearing about this dumb little deck. Give the video a like if you want to see more content like this, subscribe for more goofy Yu-Gi-Oh content in general, and join my Patreon if you want to support the show or get in on my Discord. Thanks for watching and until next time, good luck! And have fun. <laughs>